Before we try to wrap our heads around neural networks, which can have many, many nodes and an enormous number of connections between them, it will help us to zoom in on an individual neuron and explore what a single neuron can compute, what types of model that allows us to express, and how those models can be trained. A node in a neural network receives some number of inputs and performs a simple computation to produce a numerical output. That computation happens in two stages. First, we multiply each of the inputs by the corresponding weight and sum them up. Then that sum of weighted inputs is passed through an activation function to produce the output. To express this mathematically, our output comes from applying some activation function f to the result of summing up the weighted inputs. So our output is the result of applying the activation function to the sum of each weight times the input plus a bias term. The purpose of the bias is to allow this sum to be non-zero, even if all of the inputs were zero. And we can think of this bias as behaving like another weight, and so I will often draw it as another arrow coming into the node. So every time we have a neuron, it will perform a weighted sum over its inputs, but different neurons can have different activation functions. And in the context of a single neuron model, there are a couple of activation functions I'd like to highlight. Specifically, we can use a linear activation function to make our one neuron model perform regression, or we can use a step function to get our single neuron model to perform classification. In this first example, we have a neuron with a single input, and so the weighted sum of inputs comes from simply multiplying input by weight and adding the bias. And then the linear function I have chosen to go from this weighted sum of inputs to our output is simply y equals x. Why have I chosen this particularly simple linear function? Well, we already have the ability to express any linear function of x1 using our parameters w1 and b. So there's no additional benefit to more complicated activations. So if we ask what type of things can this neuron compute, any function that it represents will have a one-dimensional input, x1, and it will always produce a one-dimensional output, y, and the mapping from input to output will be a linear function. So if we pick particular values for the weight and the bias, we can then draw the specific linear function that the neuron computes. So when w1 is 3 and b is minus 2, this neuron is computing the function y equals 3x1 minus 2. So how is this related to regression? Well, in regression, we are looking for some mapping from continuous inputs to continuous outputs. And since our neuron produces continuous outputs, this is a type of function we could use for regression. And then the regression problem would be to choose the specific linear function, that is the specific values for w1 and b, that best fits some data set. It's also worth thinking about what would it look like if this neuron had more inputs? Well, then we would be mapping a multi-dimensional input to a one-dimensional output, but we would still have a linear function and could still use that for regression, but I would no longer be able to draw the plot. Here, our input is one dimension, and our output is one dimension. So if we had, say, three inputs, then we would have a three-dimensional input mapped to a one-dimensional output, and we can definitely compute that, but it's hard to draw on the whiteboard. 
For this case, I've shown a neuron with two inputs and a step function for its activation. Again, we start by calculating the weighted sum of inputs. And we can describe this sort of activation using a piecewise function. So our activation steps from 0 to 1 when the weighted sum of inputs becomes positive. Once again, if we pick example values for the weights and the bias, we could plot this on a two-dimensional graph. Because here we have two-dimensional inputs, but our output is now just 0 or 1. So I will draw the boundary in the two-dimensional plane between the inputs where the neuron outputs 0 and the inputs for which the neuron outputs 1. That boundary happens where the weighted sum of inputs is equal to 0. So if we're using this for classification, then we are labeling the inputs on one side 0 and labeling the inputs on the other side 1. So the machine learning problem here would be based on the data set to choose the best w1, w2, and b to classify the data. And once again, we can think about cases where the neuron has other numbers of inputs. If we had only one input here, then we could represent that single dimension with a line. And our function would be specifying some classification boundary where on one side we output 0 and on the other side we output 1. Thinking about how this generalizes, with one-dimensional inputs we are specifying some point on a line. With two-dimensional inputs we specify some line in the plane. If we had three inputs, then our classifier would be specifying some plane that divides 3D space. And in general, we can think of this sort of classifier as splitting n-dimensional space into the half where we output 0 and the half where we output 1. Now that we have a sense of the sorts of functions we can represent with a single neuron, let's consider how we can use those functions to perform regression or classification. For any supervised learning problem, we will have a data set that consists of many examples of what we think the function should output. Each of those examples has an input and an output, so we can think of our data set as a large collection of input-output pairs. The mathematical representation of the input and the output determines what sort of single neuron model we can use. First, if the output is binary 0 or 1, then we should use a step function for our activation. And if the output is continuous, then we should use a linear activation function. The input examples in the dataset can in principle have various dimensions, and the dimension of the input examples will determine the number of inputs and therefore the number of weights in our single neuron model. So if our input examples were two-dimensional and our outputs were continuous, then we would pick a linear neuron with two inputs and therefore two weights, and the machine learning problem would be to choose w1, w2, and b in a way that best represents the examples in the dataset. On the other hand, if we had four-dimensional inputs and binary 0, 1 outputs, then we would choose a step function for our activation, and we'd be trying to solve the machine learning problem of picking the best value for all five of the resulting parameters. The process of picking these parameters to best represent a data set is called training. And to train a neural network or a single neuron, we need to define a loss function. The job of the loss function is to tell us, for the current values of the parameters, how wrong is the model in terms of representing the data. If our data set is for one-dimensional regression like this example, 
then we will have input-output pairs that we can plot on this graph. And the loss function should be based on how far is the prediction that the model makes for certain inputs from the value in the data set at those inputs. For our classification example here, our input points have both an x1 and an x2 value, and then we can represent whether the label should be 1 or 0 by the color here. And so our model is wrong when it puts points on the wrong side of the decision boundary. So the goal of the loss function is to tell us, for the current parameter values, how wrong is the model on the data set. And the first loss function we will consider is the sum of squared errors. That is, for each data point in the model, we'll take the difference between what the model predicted and what we should have gotten, square that difference, and sum them up. And now that we've defined a loss function that describes how wrong our model is, our goal is to update the parameters in a way that reduces the loss, making our model less wrong. And the key idea for how we can update the parameters to reduce the loss is gradient descent, which will be the subject of our next video.